What's up guys, Doug Polk here, and today we're going on a journey. A journey deep into the darkest places in poker. The darkest place, in fact. I'm talking about the one thing no poker player ever wants to do, but sometimes has to. I'm talking about looking down at pocket kings and throwing her into the muck before a flop comes. We've all made some big folds in our day, but none hurt more than this one. It, no, this oh, is just a fold. Wow, it's wow. Not a fold. What the heck? Ugh, that fold actually might have hurt more, but still, this is the ultimate poker fold. I have gone through and tirelessly searched the internet for all hands where someone folded King's preflop. And by me, I mean one of my staff members, and by tirelessly, I mean I'm paying them to do work for me. I've managed to put together five hands where someone folded King's preflop. We're going to see was it correct or not. And then we also have one bonus fold where someone made a very smart lay down with kings. We're gonna dive deep in here and go through, should you ever fold kings and when do you have to on maybe the most difficult play to make in poker. Let's go ahead and jump into the action. Before we get going here, I wanna let you know two things. First off, we're gonna be editing out our opponent's whole cards for all of these hands. So you're gonna see the kings but you're not gonna see what the other guy has, so you don't know if they have aces or not, unless, of course, you've seen these clips before. But basically, you're gonna have to use your own intuition. What would you do? We're gonna go through hand by hand. Second, if you never wanna have to fold King's preflop, then you're gonna have to play in some shallow stack games. And if you wanna play in some shallow stack games, you're gonna need to play tournaments. And if you're gonna play tournaments, you need the Road to Victory, the ultimate tournament course coming May 2023 with Darren Elias and Nick Petrangelo only on UpswingPoker.com. Darren tweeted saying he's excited to announce the release of his first ever training course this May with Upswing Poker. I've collaborated with longtime friend Nick Petrangelo to create this unique offering and share what we, we believe to be the most important ideas in winning poker tournaments. If you guys want to learn more, I'll put a link in the description below. You can sign up to be notified about the course release. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our first hand of Kings letting it go pre. Our hand begins at 5,100 with Tom Marquis open it up under the gun with pocket kings. He will be the player we're following along for this hand. He now faces a three bet from Jennifer Tilly under the gun plus one to $800. Action folds the button. Justin, I believe this is Stealth Monk, comes in for the cold flat, little, little pot brewing here, and the action gets back over to Tom. Now with kings here, you don't want to take a three-way flop. You want to pump this pot up. Build it. Let's go. You're happy to play versus either player, but three ways someone's pretty likely to outflop you. You want to lower the chance of that happening. Tom agrees and makes it $3,000 to go. The action now back over to Tilly. She's got about 230 big blinds effective. She thinks it over for a little bit and decides to wager all of it. Justin folds on the button and Marquise now has to think it over. What would you do here with your pocket kings, guys? Your first quiz out of a five-parter. Pocket kings here. 230 big blinds, under the gun, under the gun, plus one. What are you doing? All right, we're now going to reveal Jennifer's hand. She had pocket aces, and Marquise lets it go very quickly. It, almost, a, almost an instant fold here from Tom. A correctly done pocket kings into the muck. One for the pocket kings folding crowd done correctly. Something to think about with this hand is under the gun plus under the gun plus one. That should influence it a bit. Uh, it's possible there's no ante, which would also influence this. Uh, and then, you know, maybe Tom thinks that Tilly's just not someone that's going to be, you know, ripping it in with a suited ace or something like that in this spot as a bluff and thinks that she simply just has ace. I, I, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm really impressed by this fold, frankly. This seems like an incredibly good fold from Tom, but... Uh, yeah, I knew exactly where he was at once she jammed, and he let it go correctly. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our next hand. Our last hand was six years ago at Live the Bike, and now we're going to go over to a hand that was just five years ago at Live the Bike. And one of the things I have to say, guys, streaming quality has come a long way. Jesus. I mean, look how much better things look today compared to this. It's kind of incredible. Anyway, our hand begins once again at Live the Bike with Johnny Vice kicking off the action. Pocket Kings, he's going to be the Cowboys for this one. Under the Gun Plus One raises to $300. Action folds to Ken in the cutoff, who's on a about 10K starting stack here, so, so much less deep than the last hand we just looked at. He makes it $1,450 to go. So $300 open, $1,450 three bet from Ken. Back over to Johnny Vibes with the Pocket Kings. What do you do here? Kind of weird stack size. It's going to be hard to four bet this. 
and leave yourself room to be able to fold. But Johnny Vibe's actually going to go ahead and do it, make it 4K. This is something like 35, 40% of all of Ken's chips with Kings here. Started with about maybe even just 9,400. This might almost be half of his stack. It's kind of unclear with the overlay. Either way, does four bet the Kings. Kings, a very strong hand. A lot of hands you're going to get value from. Back over to Ken. What's he going to do? He jams. His total stack is 10.9 thousand. So it's about 7,000 more to call. This is not very good size from Johnny. Put about $4,000 in here. If there's any chance the opponent could have ace, king, or queen, it's going to have to make the call. He would have to soul read him for aces in order to lay this one down after putting in $4,000 pre versus an $11,000 jam. But this is a video where people are folding kings. What is he going to do? Ultimately, he decides to let it go. So very different kings fold here. It took a lot longer. Some different positions. But he does let the kings go. And he's going to get shown. Do you have your answer? Do you know what this? is? He's going to get shown the pocket aces. Another good kings fold. Wow, guys. I'm starting to think maybe we need to fold kings more often. You got that, you got that tingling feeling to fold kings. They probably have aces. Even though this is correct in this spot, I still feel like he needs to forbid a smaller size. And... Uh, I think you just got to call the jam, man. I mean, this could be ace, king, or queens. This is not nearly the depth of the hand that we just saw. I mean, it was obviously a good lay down. So, you know, who's got the chips? But, um, you know, definitely a great read there. But this is why we don't 4-bet to 4K and put ourselves in that spot. No, you should just get stacked here. Should have gotten stacked. <laughs> well, welcome to, welcome to my hand reviews where the thing I tell you to do gets loses you all your money. But you know what? What can I say? If you got... 110 bigs, kings versus aces. You should you should be heading for the door. Anyway, let's move on to hand number three in our kings. Should they have folded or not video? Next hand up, it's at a little poker room I think you might have heard of called The Lodge. That's right. Shamelessly promoting my own brand, but it does fit the criteria. Regardless, this hand has a lot of straddles going. In fact, it's straddled up to $100. Action kicks off with an open. We're not going to show you any of the hands because I want you to have to guess what they had. Um, action kicks off with an open in the cutoff from Hart. $250 to go. Mark calls on the button with two cards. Action folds to Big Daddy Chaz. He's going to bump it up here in the big blind, making it $1,100 to go. And now we look down at Pocket Kings. $17,000 stack in this situation. Uh, we do have to keep in mind that Chaz 3-bet two small stacks, which makes it a little less likely that he's bluffing, although, of course, he still could be. And when we 4-bet here, we are committing ourselves versus these small stacks. Because of this, Rory decides to go for a small 4-bet size, 2250. I think I would actually go a bit bigger here. You're going to have to call a jam from either of the other two players anyway. or I mean, you're happily calling a jam, but you're going to call a jam. Uh, and if you were bluffing, you were going to call a jam. Your odds are going to be too good regardless. So I think it's a little more important to pick a size that's good versus Chaz's range rather than manage the short stack scenario. But I could be wrong. I play heads up poker and there's a lot of people at this table. Anyway, the original opener folds, the button caller folds. And now back over to Chaz. This is about 140 big blinds effective in the straddle versus the big blind. And Chaz announces that he is all in. Wagers all of the chips. What do you do with pocket kings here, guys? Do you let it go? Do you live to fight another day? Or does this guy look a little nervous here, covering his face, trying to hide? I don't know. Look at all those chips out there. Tough to say. What would you do? Have your answer, okay? Here we go. Here's the reveal. And Rory Folds versus... The ace five suited. We now have a bluff in there, guys. It's not all aces and kings. Sometimes it's the suited ace making a move. This is actually one of our biggest clips that we had on Facebook. People really like this on Facebook. Nothing gets the Facebook crowd 
riled up like a like a nice king's fold. Anyway, so the score is now two to one. Good fold versus bad fold. We're moving on to hand number four. We now head over to a new venue for our fourth hand. The action begins with Wesley opening it up, getting a call. Nick squeezing here in the cutoff. 1,200 to go. Very large squeeze in position here. Baird, you now looks down at the pocket kings. I think you got to come in here for a re-raise. You're out of position on everyone. We need to kind of isolate one player. And then maybe we can get away if we have to. But we're still pretty feeling pretty good about everyone where we're at. Anyway, he decides to just simply call here with the kings. It's our first kind of pre-flop trap with the kings, if you will, facing a three bet. Just calls. Francisco now decides he's going to play for more money. Four bets to $5,200. It's a pretty big four bet. All three players now, excluding the callers, all, all of the players that have put in four-figure amounts, they're playing about 500 big blind seats. This is a lot of big blinds. Francisco makes $5,200 to go. Very, very threatening raise here. Nick gets out of the way. And now what's Bear do with the Kings? I mean, you know what he's going to do because this is a folding Kings preflop video. But 500 big blinds against Francisco the Pro. You guys actually might have seen Francisco recently on the video I did where I analyzed his check raise against Wesley. So you know he's a capable player. Bergeau has to think it over, ask some questions, decide what he has to do. Ultimately, though, you know what he's going to do because this is a Folding Kings preflop video. What do you think? Good fold? Bad fold? Are you letting this one go? The answer is Francisco had just about aces. I mean, they look like aces, They're but they're pocket fours. There's, there's a notable difference between the four and the ace. They're close, you know, the ace and then the four. So I could see maybe Francisco thought he had aces. So maybe this is a good fold. But I, I think people misreading their cards, that still counts as a bad fold for Kings. So we're even up. The, he didn't misread his cards. But we're going to even up the score here. Nice move from Francisco. Gets his opponent off of the Kings. And we are now all tied up 2-2. We got an even ball game going into our final hand we're going to review. Let's look at our last Kings pre fold full. We could find the archives. We are looking at, once again, a hand at live at the bike. This time the stakes are a little bit larger than some of the other hands that we're looking at. Got some very, very deep stacks in play here. Garrett opens up under the gun. I believe the stakes are 50, 100, 200... Maybe an ante in there, one hundred dollar ante, one hundred, two hundred, two hundred dollar ante. It's something like that. Garrett opens up under the gun, six hundred dollars to go. Bill Klein looks down at two cards that I'm not saying. Made that error fifty million times this video. Now Jackie's going to be our pocket kings player, four hundred and twenty four thousand dollar stack. My lord, got some deep stops stacks for one hundred, two hundred, or whatever we're playing here. Anyway, pocket kings. Price of poker going up. $3,500 to go. Back over to Garrett now. Some very, 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 very deep stack poker here. How many blinds is this? They're, they're 1,700 big blinds deep. My, my God. What even happens when you get that deep, frankly? Anyway, Garrett decides he's going to four bet. 10K to go. All right, pot is escalating. But Bill's not out of the hand yet. Bill's still thinking about it. This is getting to be a lot of action for Kings to be facing. A lot of action. Bill's raising on a mere 850 big blind stack. Oh, it'd be embarrassing. Can you guys imagine seeing down at 1-2 and only having, oh my God, what would it be, $1,700 in your stack? <laughs> embarrassing. For shame. Jackie trying to get a good read in the situation. What are we going to do here with our kings? Raise, 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 raise. We got three players. Everyone's raising. Now Bill's making it 27,000. 
Do have the kings? Checks them. Still there. Still kings. What do we do here? Jackie thinks it over for quite some time. And ultimately lets it go. What do you think? Good fold by kings? This is your final, final guess, guys. Time to reveal their hands. Garrett folded and had ace three of diamonds. And Bill, who took the pot down, had the pocket jacks. The pocket jacks, guys. A little aggression paying off for Bill there. So, Cliff notes, our video of the day, our research has shown that in three out of five pots selected on the internet, folding King's Bailout was wrong. And thus, mathematically speaking, of course, you should always put in your money with Kings. But we do have one specialty shout out hand that I want to show you before we go today. This hand happened over on Poker Go. And we're going to just briefly mention it. Polak four bets to $2,000. And his opponent has pocket Kings. What would you do with pocket Kings here? Facing this size bet on just this short stack situation. Well, you're probably thinking, of course, I put it in, Doug. But what if I told you your opponent turns his cards over and shows you the aces? That, my friends, makes the decision a little easier. Thank you guys for joining me today. Breaking down all these Pocket Kings folds. I hope you enjoyed it. A lot of great streams to choose from. Live at the Bike, Hustler, Lodge, Poker Go. I'll put some links in the description below to check these streams out. But really... Be careful with floating kings pre, guys, because uh, in a lot of spots, you're going to end up regretting it. Or you won't. Some of them were good. There you have it.